Hey guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about our systems across the North Atlantic Basin. So we have major Hurricane Sam, which is there, as well as three disturbances. And out of that three, we have Invests 90 and 91 else. So we're going to take a look at these in details, but before I do so... <music> All right, so let's get start things with our disturbance that is located out in the open Atlantic. And so we're seeing here that this is given a low 10% chance to develop. So nothing much is going to really become of this. And this is associated with the remnants of Peter. So it is unlikely that we will have development because it is accelerating more to the north and into much cooler waters. And that alone is going to be preventing development because it is not moisture and warmth, which is what our tropical cyclones need in order to develop and intensify. And so let's move on now to our invest. So first up is invest 91 Ellen. So we're seeing a big change in terms of this disturbance here. So we're seeing that the chance has significantly decreased for this to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone. So we're seeing a 30% chance for potential development. And the reason for this decrease is because of its interaction with invest 90 L, which is located to the east of it. So invest 90 L is basically absorbing this low pressure system here. So development is not really anticipated and the reason for that is because of their close proximity to each other so automatically the stronger one which is invest 90l is absorbing 91 l and on sunlight we were seeing here that we don't have much become of it actually over to the right uh, that is invest 90l that you're seeing peaking up and uh, over to the left we have what is basically left of invest 91l so we're just seeing some spots of shower and thunderstorm activity taking place nothing too significant and nothing much is really anticipated from that disturbance as time goes by and so now let's move on to invest 90l and so we're seeing that the formation chance is very high as of right now for this to develop so a high 90 percent chance for us to have a tropical cyclone so this is developing quite nicely it's located basically to the south of the cabo verde islands and it is expected to make its way to the northwest during the next couple of days and so Let's take a look at it on satellite and here we have it. It is getting very, very organized as of right now. And so it is likely that probably by later today, we will have this achieved tropical depression or potentially tropical storm status. And so it is more than likely at this point that this will become tropical storm Victor and Victor is the next thing to be used. And after Victor is Wanda. And remember that previously we expected both of these disturbances, uh, both invests to become tropical cyclones because the chances for both were really high but now 91L is definitely failing. And so in terms of what our models are expecting in terms of Invest 90L, we're seeing that we have quite a bit available and all agree that this will strengthen into a tropical storm and from that number most agree that this will eventually become a category 1 hurricane. Three of those models are expecting that this will strengthen into a cat 2. And so intensification into a hurricane is not impossible. Once conditions are going to start getting unfavorable as in cooler ocean temperatures as well as that wind shear and even the dry air intrusion as a result of the Saharan dust. Those are inhibiting factors and so once we have those being in place then we won't likely have much intensification of this during the next couple of days but one thing that is almost for sure is that this will develop into a tropical cyclone and fortunately it is not expected to be a threat to land at least for the next week or so and in terms of our model track guidance we're seeing that all of them agree on the same thing basically that that this is going to be making its way up to the northwest and eventually turn up to the north and being in the open atlantic and that would make this a uh, tropical cyclone a fish storm so nothing much is going to really become of this after a while all right so let's take a look at a major hurricane sam and so we're seeing here that on satellite it is looking quite compact however we don't have that clear eye and uh, we have it fluctuating a lot in intensity so now we have it being slightly weaker than it was last night it had winds of 140 miles per hour and now they have decreased to 130 and so this general fluctuation and intensity is likely due to to the hour replacement cycles and uh, that fluctuation is likely to happen probably for the next day or so but gradual weakening is going to be anticipated as it accelerates up to the north as a result of the 
shear that is expected to kick up. So more unfavorable shear will be setting in as it makes its way up to the north. And we're seeing that it is expected to remain a hurricane through to Saturday. But by Sunday, it is going to be or probably just a cat 2 and eventually weaken down to a cat 1 and become an extratropical cyclone. So let's take a look at favorability across the basin. So first up is the sea surface temperatures. And so we're seeing here that ocean temperatures are relatively warm, especially in the vicinity of the Caribbean and in portions of the main development region and also surrounding the Bahamas area, very, very warm ocean waters. And in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, just off the coast of Louisiana and Mississippi, we're seeing a cool down taking place right there. So that is usually the spot where during the peak of the season, which was earlier this month and basically late last month, we had rapid intensification before landfall, especially with Ida. And so that is because ocean temperatures were very, very conducive, especially just off the coast. But now as we're approaching the latter part of the hurricane season, we're seeing that we don't have much going on for the Gulf of Mexico. In terms of the wind shear, we're seeing that we have major Hurricane Sam, which is in the vicinity of shear that is quite favorable, and we have some neutral shear ahead of it. And so the colors indicate the, favor the favorability of the shear. So we have the green, that means favorable, the yellow means neutral, and the red means unfavorable. And so it is likely that we will have Sam remaining as a major hurricane during the next couple of days as it is going to be making its way out into the open waters. And by the uh, latter part of this week to early next week, it is expected to pass well to the east of Bermuda, not to bring in any significant impacts. And so guys, something very important to note. So during the month of October... We typically have storms originate from in the Caribbean. Sometimes they might make their way to the Gulf, but majority of the times they are expected to make their way over from the Western Caribbean, moving parallel to the East Coast or being further out to sea and potentially making their way up to Atlantic Canada. And so this is not to say that we won't have storms developing elsewhere in the basin. It's just that this is usually the spot where we have tropical cyclones developing. And actually, last year proved that quite well. So we had quite a few systems that developed in the Caribbean. And some of those systems are Delta, Zeta, and Eta. So those were all Greek named storms that developed in the Caribbean and so during the month of October and so that proves it quite well. They did, none of them made their way up to the north well except for Ada when it made its way back into the Caribbean and moved up to uh, Florida right there but aside from that we didn't really have any of the storms that developed in the Caribbean making their way up to the north. And so guys there is the possibility that the Caribbean, specifically the Greater Antilles and Central America, could be more at risk during the month of October once conditions are going to be conducive to enable tropical cyclone development. So once we have disturbances in that region, and actually the GFS model has been hinting towards something developing uh, close to Jamaica, but again, things can change and we really have to wait and see what is going to be the eventual outcome as we head into the latter part of the hurricane season. And so guys, I will keep you updated on the latest as time goes by and that is it for this update video. So if you found it to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can also share thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best and as I can. And just remember to always be weatherwise.